Switching gears here, access to capital remains the number one challenge of minority business owners. According to the 2020 Crunchbase Diversity Spotlight Report, Black and Latinx founders raised $2.3 billion in funding, which is just 2.6% of nearly $88 billion in funding that goes to all founders and all companies. Now, companies including JP Morgan, Apple, and Starbucks, they're making an effort to close that gap by supplying capital to minority entrepreneurs. However, the critical piece is accountability. Here to discuss is Rashawn Williams, who is the general partner of Manhattan Venture Partners. Great to have you here with us today, Rashawn, and, and really excited to have this discussion. Have the barriers to accessing capital, have they loosened for minority entrepreneurs in the past year? What has the delta been? Yeah, I think so. It's good to see you again, first and foremost. I do think they've loosened a little bit, but I think the biggest misnomer is what the actual issue is. So let me just explain quickly what the issue is, why you see this discrepancy between funding that black and, and minority founders get versus non-black and minority founders. Most people don't know this, but in Silicon Valley, before a company raises that 10, 20, 30 million dollar round from a VC firm, they typically raise three different rounds from people outside of the VC firms. This is the real problem with minorities. It's, it's, it's a big wealth gap issue. Round number one is typically that founder putting their own money into the company. And when you look at the, the net worth of minorities in this country, you can see why we don't have a lot of money to put into our own startups. But I've seen people start, and I've invested in 150 startups. I've seen people start by putting 25K, 50K, up to $300,000 of their own money in their startup. That's round number one. Round number two is from what we call family, friends, and fools. We don't know that many family members and friends or fools who have 50K, 25K, 100K to put into our startups. So we typically don't have that first 50K or 100K from ourselves because of the wealth gap. We typically don't know family and friends that can put in that next 50, 100, 250K. And then the third round is also a big gap in the minority communities, and it's the angel investor community. We're, we don't have the Stanford alums and the Harvard alums that will write a $100,000 check just because you went to those schools. You look at all these HBCU students, et cetera. Like they can't just call alums and get $100,000 for their startup. Now, after non-black founders put their own money in, raise money from family and friends, and then raise money from angel investors, now they have a business, they have a product, they have some customers, they have a team, and they have traction. Then they go to Silicon Valley. Sure. where the minority founders don't have that opportunity. So they have a company that's a little bit of an earlier stage and it's not a real big match for VCs who like sure. to invest in growth. And, and Rashawn, I just want to jump in because as you mentioned, and we've had these discussions before about what takes place as you are evaluating company, what has changed in the way that companies are evaluated and the discussions that take place internally at venture capital firms are conducted, especially when they are having the founder or one of the chief executives of the companies that are being looked at to fund, to pour capital into. How have those discussions changed and are you seeing a, a movement in the dialogue there? Yeah, for the first time in 20 years in finance, I can say there is a, a mass acknowledgement of the hurdles that African Americans and minorities face in this country. Mm -hmm. It's been just so blatant lately that it's hard to deny it. Where before, if you're not a part of the ecosystem, you can say, oh, well, look at that guy. He made it, right? I think now most people acknowledge that there are obstacles that minority face. So they're looking for ways to solve the problem. What I've seen is they would rather donate money, a million dollars, two million dollars. These are the top VC firms donating money out of their own pockets to funding early stage after American startups, but they still won't put it in their fund yet because the fund is all about performance. It's all about traction. So we're seeing a lot of micro VCs pop up, VC funds less than $50 million to help bridge that gap in the family and friends and the angel investor network that we don't have because of the wealth gap in this country. Yeah, that's a really good point. And so I guess what's your reaction been to some of the major announcements that companies, publicly traded entities we talk about every day here, when they yeah. do make these announcements saying, hey, we're going to donate into certain minority-run businesses, black-owned businesses, yeah. um, and, and you know, how does that dovetail back into what you were just mentioning a moment ago? 
So it fits perfectly into the groundswell that's already been happening. On the grassroots level, minority founders have been kicking down the door saying, we want access, we're talented. You can even look at guys like the founder of Calendly here in Atlanta, $3 billion valuation didn't even go to Silicon Valley. So we're proving these points that we can build these startups. Then right above that, you have all of these VC firms that popped up years ago that were specifically looking to focus. Now we're getting institutional support from top down, Fortune 500 companies, top tier VC firms that are saying, hey, we hear you, we recognize it, we wanna do something to change it. So I, I love what's happening right now because it's all coming full circle. One last point, Brad, and you know this very well, the other thing that's causing this momentum shift is athletes and entertainers in the black community. Mm -hmm. As they become better investors and better founders, think Beats by Dre, think 50 Cent Vitamin Water, then the culture shifts. And now we have all of these young kids that want to be founders and investors just like them. So it's happening from every angle, and I absolutely love it. When your company is absorbed into a larger brand, i.e. what we saw with Bevel and how that was able to be absorbed into one of the industry leaders, you know, how do you ensure that not only your business continues to grow even if it has been acquired by a larger entity, but that you also get equity so that you are part of the decision making that's taking place to make sure that your business is not the only one perhaps, especially if there's another solid business proposition and company, either a product or a service, that the same company that acquired you should also be talking to at the end of the day and how do you advocate on behalf of those other companies? Yeah, so the next step for us, the next evolution is board representation, where we help set the strategy and we monitor and we vet out the CEOs, right? So the board is responsible for looking out for the shareholders. The CEO is responsible for creating shareholder value. So we have to constantly move up. Think about how Shaquille O'Neal is now on the board of, of Papa John's, right? So he can ensure that things are going to happen in a way that fairly represents our community. We need more of those types of opportunities where we're on boards and there's a whole push to make sure that that happens as well. But I think it's also a good point where we need to stick strong and true to our virtues and to our culture and not just do stuff that we think other people want us to do all the time. We have to go the harder route and make sure that we represent ourselves and our culture when we come into these companies. And I think now more than any time in the past, I know it doesn't feel like it, but I can tell you from what I'm seeing, companies, are receptive to diversity and companies are receptive to people bringing different experiences to the table where before you had to look exactly like these engineers in order to get this job you had to look exactly like these vcs in order to get this job i think now more than ever people are open to people being different but them still contributing in a major way Rashawn, such a pleasure to have this conversation look forward to having you back in the future as well Rashawn Williams, who is the general partner of Manhattan Venture Partners. We got to leave things there on the deck.